Hello traders, it's been a while since we've gone over my trading statistics. We've taken 91 out of 100 trades that we want to take to test my market open small cap trading plan. That plan is right here. I gave it a recent update and uploaded it to Patreon. But this is just a small piece of the trading plan and this is what we are testing. This is what we have been testing all the way since September 15th. It's taken a very long time for a bunch of reasons. One is just because I haven't been able to trade every single trade day. There's been many days, uh, especially around the holidays where I had to take time off studying for board exams. I don't talk a lot about that because it sounds like a brag or something. And I don't want you to think that I'm trying to say I have some advantage on the market because I'm studying physics or something like that, which I, that's why I never talk about that. But I feel like I need to bring it up just to explain why is there such a huge gap in uh, my trading statistics. And there's so many days that I have to take off. I'm finishing, finishing up my master's degree in a physics field. So my bachelor's is in physics bachelor's of science in physics and uh, my master's degree is in a physics related field i don't really want to say any more than that because i don't want to give too much away it absolutely has nothing to do with finances or financial markets so there's no inherent advantage to my background but one thing that i think uh it does give me an advantage with is just the ability to analyze my statistics and to look at things from a more scientific and less emotional perspective does that mean that i'm going to be a better trader than someone who never went to college or something like that absolutely not i'm not trying to claim that at all i'm only bringing that up because as you can imagine doing something like that takes a lot of time a lot of work so there's just days where i just have to say i can't trade today i have to focus on my work um, right now I'm working on a thesis that I have to finish within like um, a couple of months max, maybe a month and a half. So uh, I'm still pretty busy at the moment, but this week I had time at the market open to uh, trade every single day. And probably the most frustrating thing about that is that there were four out of the five days where there were no trades triggered. But I've been doing this long enough now, um, over two years at this point, where I've developed a great deal of discipline and I know not to let that bother me. I know there's going to be days, sometimes strings of days, where there's going to be no trades triggered. And what I tried to do, at least in the as of the past few months here, if you look at my spreadsheet here going back to um, March 28th, I started putting in like a gray days where I wasn't even looking at the market where I was busy doing other things. And then these white days were are days where I was trying to find trades, but nothing was triggering my setup. So that gives you the background. Hopefully that clears things up. If you're wondering like, well, you know, why doesn't this guy trade every day anymore? That's why. And uh, I don't like to talk about it because I don't want you to think that, you know, I want to uh, use that as some selling point to my trading plan or ideas because it has nothing to do with that but anyway the statistics that we've gathered so far i think are really interesting we've taken 91 trades so far i want to take 100 trades again because there's something called the law of large numbers which says that basically this is not you know word for word but basically if you take a test the same test over and over again and and test it 100 times that you're going to arrive at the average results of that test and if you stopped, say, after 10 tests or 20 tests, something like that, you really have no idea what the probability of the outcome of that test is. But if you take it up to 100, you're getting very, very close to the average outcome. If you go from 100 to 1,000, it's a very small difference. So that's the basic idea behind taking 100 test trades to prove a strategy. And that's why we are so kind of hell bent on that uh, 100 number, even though it's taking a very long time. Previous to this, I did a mid cap market uh, strategy that I tested to 100 trades, and that only took me like a month and a half, even with taking, you know, a few days off here and there from the markets. But this one has taken, you know, what, six, seven months now, I think. But anyway, we already went over all the reasons why. And, and a lot of that is because of the market condition since 2022. We've been in a huge sell off. So my trading plan and my strategy just doesn't get triggered to take trades as often. And I think that's okay because the market has been crazy. So we shouldn't be uh, getting into certain trades right now. And I don't have to think about that. Like, are the market conditions right for a trade? I don't think about that. I just go based on the criteria that's laid out in my trading plan. And it tells me when to trade and when not to trade based on what's happening on charts and what's happening on my screener. 
and that's it. I don't put any thought into, is this a good trade or not? I just look at my criteria. Is my criteria met? If it's met, boom, I enter the trade and that's it. And then I set my stop loss and my prof profit target according to the plan. And the plan has always been the same since way back in September. So what we've been doing for the test duration has been holding everything to uh, to our profit target. So that means that whatever we're risking, let's say it's a dollar, our reward is two dollars. But we've also been tracking the three R profit target. So if we're risking a dollar, the reward is three dollars. And after 100 trades, we were going to decide which is the more profitable profit target. And it kind of seems like a no-brainer that the 3R profit target should be more profitable than the 2R target. But there are times when the 2R target gets hit. I'll show you an example here, and the 3R target does not. So if you go back to September 30th, 2021, we took a trade on INDI that hit the 2R profit target but did not hit the 3R profit target. But what's way more interesting than that is that all other times that the 2R profit target was hit, the 3R profit target was hit. I'm gonna just kind of scroll through these and you can look at the two and then it becomes a three as the 3R profit target gets hit. Now that happens every single time, even on our first entry. And then let's go to the uh, second trade here and look at that as well. The spreadsheet's a little bit messy. I have to do a little bit of cleanup work, but all of the data here is accurate. All the statistics are accurate. Now, this very first trade on trade number two was a weird trade out of 91 trades. This has only happened once so far where we were triggered to take the trade. We set our profit target, our stop loss, and neither ever got hit until the end of the day. And one of my rules in my trading plan is to never hold anything overnight. If you end up at the end of the trade day and the trade still hasn't triggered either your profit target or your stop loss, you must get out of the trade wherever it is. And where we got out, we were able to make a one hour profit target. So I still consider that a winning trade because obviously we didn't lose anything on it. It just never hit either the target or the stop loss. Um, but as I said, in that case, we have to exit the trade before the end of the day. Now, um, here on trade number two, you could see a couple other instances where the 2R trade did not become a 3R trade, but most of the time it does. And the end result is, I'm going to scroll down here. Uh, there's some cleaning up to do. These, these were losing trades, these two here. But again, all of the statistics are accurate. They're all correct here. So... If we look at the end result, if we were holding the 2R, our trade number two is up 14R. If we're holding the 3R, our trade number two is up 20R. And then back here on the first trade, we didn't go over that. For 2R, we're down 13R. And then for 3R, we're down 3R. And if you look at my uh, win rate for trade number one, it's above 25%, which is profitable for 3R trading. So why is this down minus 3R? Because of that one instance where the trade didn't go to uh, 3R. So if that didn't happen, this would be like a, a plus 1R, I believe, right now. So anyway, it's it's so close to being flat, it doesn't even matter. But let's keep going. So trade number two, we're up 14R for 2R, up 20R for 3R. And trade number three is like pretty much statistically insignificant because we've only taken seven trades so far. So I've got some writing on there from a previous video I never erased. But we've only taken seven trades so far on trade number three. So our data doesn't really mean much. And um, right now we're just above break even on, on that trade, trade entry number three, minus one R for two R and up one R for three R. So the overall uh, statistics I think are really compelling. So trade number one works out just over 25% of the time. Again, this is for 2R. So for 3R, that number would be a little bit like 24.9 or something like that. Um, actually, I could probably give that to you right now, I think, if I just switch that number. Yeah, there we go. So for 3R, it works out 24.07% of the time. And the break-even for 3R is 25% of the time. So it's just under break-even. And we've been debating this whole entire time. When we're done with this thing, are we going to skip trade one and just use that as a signal to look for trade two? Or are we going to take trade number one? So I'm, st I'm still not sure what I want to do about that. I kind of have a feeling and I'll explain that a little bit now. And when we're done with the 100 trades, I'll get into more detail about that. But first, let's look at the statistics if we skip that first trade. So 2R without the first trade, we'd be up 14R. With our first trade, we're break even right now for 2R. So that's a really compelling argument for, for uh, skipping the first trade. Now, 
the three hour win rate, we would be up 23 R if we skipped our first trade. We're up 18 R with the first trade. So uh, that's still a difference of five R, but it's getting a little bit less compelling, the idea of skipping the first trade. Now there's some other drawbacks. So obviously, statistically speaking, it makes sense. Skip the first trade, use it as an entry signal for the second trade. We may do that at some point, but there is a kind of a hidden drawback to skipping the first trade, a couple of them actually. One of them is it adds a lot of complexity to the trading because you're going to see a, an entry triggered and you're gonna to have to kind of mark it out on the chart and then you have to sit there and wait for it to be stopped out and then look for the next entry. It's not that hard to do, but there are gonna be times where it never stops out and it goes all the way to two or three R. Obviously it doesn't happen enough really to uh, in the 2R scenario to make it worth it. But in the 3R case, it's a little bit better. And the other issue there is how frustrated are you going to be on those days where it just gives you a one and done trade and you missed it because you were just waiting? Um, I mean, of course, that's a matter of discipline. And maybe after enough trades, you will get kind of tired of giving up the, the extra reward that you're getting here skipping that first trade versus taking the first trade. So that's really where the debate lies. It's like, how complex do you want to make the trading system? Uh, how, how much optimization do you want to apply? And how much kind of sitting and waiting and frustration and stuff are you willing to deal with so that you can come away with the optimal outcome? That's, that's really what we're talking about here. So, um, so that's really the debate. Right now, it's, it's kind of close enough where I'm tempted to just keep that first trade in there. So that's, you know, that's why I say I'm not really decided about it. And the other thing I want to talk about is we've only been trading one single share on every single one of these trades. And that's not what we're going to do when we put this uh, plan into action with full position size. We're going to be trading the same dollar amount on every stock. So the PL should average out over time to where the risk is is uh, roughly the same again over time over 100 trades you might have like one trade where you're risking one percent and another trade where you're risking three percent and obviously that's a big difference but again over time after 100 trades that average is two percent right and and that's that's really what we're looking at is kind of the long-term risk here so uh that's some other things to talk about and then the PL is really a cost of the test because we're only trading one single share size. This is not really a reflection of PL. This is how much it's cost us to take the test. So during all of these trades, 91 trades, we've lost $5.01 to get 91 trades worth of data. So I, I think that's pretty compelling argument for trading one single share uh, while you're test trading and not trading full position size because what if you were trading full position size and the strategy doesn't work obviously in this case it works really well for 3r it's break even for 2r so we would probably be somewhere around flat for for 2r um, and then for 3r which we would not have done from the beginning uh, you could make money off of that but again you don't know that until after you've taken so many trades so i'd rather risk a few dollars to collect the data trading one single share. And then once you know it's profitable, then you increase to full position size. So I think we've pretty much covered everything. I did not update this box here. The, a few of these numbers are gonna change, but it, you know it's, it's very close to being accurate. But all of this data here is accurate. This is all accurate. This is accurate. This is updated. This I didn't update either. But anyway, uh, everything else that you see, all the big important stuff, uh, the big important data points, they are accurate. And one last thing I want to talk about is this trade that we took today, VERU, um, went to 3R. I have a video showing that, not the 3R part, but if you look at the chart later on, it did go to 3R, even with my kind of botched entry. If you look at today's video, you will see what I mean by that. And uh, it also went 4, 5R, maybe 6R. I'm not sure I didn't check all the way, but that's what we're going to be looking at in the future once we put this plan into action. We are going to be holding till 3R, but we're going to be tracking 4R and 5R and see after another 100 trades, what is the most profitable target? And uh, we'll adjust accordingly. We'll still track the 2R as well because you never know uh, things could change. I doubt it, but uh, things could change. So it's good to track that. So we'll be tracking all of those profit targets simultaneously. And I will revise this spreadsheet and kind of clean it up and get rid of some of the information that we've been tracking that we don't really need. For example, 
The uh, setup that we're taking is what I call the ABCD pattern. That's a common term used in trading, but kind of uh, there's multiple definitions out there if you look. And mine is uh, directly from a trading book that I read a long time ago, and then I kind of developed my own variation on it. So uh, I don't think there's like a correct way to define the ABCD pattern, but I do have a video on how I define it so that you know what I'm talking about. So you can check that out if you want. But obviously we're, t we're always taking the same setup with this strategy and that's important. Uh, otherwise the data you're tracking doesn't really mean anything if you're trading multiple setups. So we can get rid of that. Uh, we're always trading intraday, we can get rid of that. The market cap, there doesn't seem to be any correlation with the market cap. We're trading small caps, so they're all between 300 million and $2 billion. Uh, market capitalization. There doesn't seem to be any correlation with market cap within that range and whether or not the, the trade wins or loses so we can get rid of that as well. So uh, in the long run, this spreadsheet will end up being a lot cleaner, a lot easier to track the trades and uh, easier to read and all that kind of stuff. So that's pretty much it. That was a big update and I shared some personal stuff as well just for the sake of transparency. Hopefully uh, you got that. If you have any questions about anything that I said or any data that I shared in this video, let me know in the comment section below. As always, go into every single trade with a plan. Stick to that plan no matter what. Always take your stop losses, honor your profit target, and in the long run, you should be green. Take care.